Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our 2024 Storytelling Initiative info session. Um, here is, first of all, we like to do a little intro of who will be presenting today and also a brief agenda for our info session today. Um, here on screen for a spotlight are both the Storytelling Initiative core team, the Siri producers Anurana, Pallavi, Smusetti, and also joining us today uh, is also our uh, ADOC operations director, Lailani Gavia. Um, hello, everyone. And in today's session, we will go, um, you, can, as you can also see on the slide, we will go through a little bit about ADOC storytelling initiatives history, how we came to be. And also uh, we will dive deeper into our microdoc series. It includes a background of the series, uh, what kind of artistic approach in the series we're looking for and themes, topics of interest we're looking for, as well as timeline, the impact campaign attached to this series. And we'll also talk about submission requirements, elig eligibility, and depending on how much time we have left, we will also open up for any question that you have. And now I'm going to pass it to Paolo Wee to talk a little more about our storytelling initiative. Hi, everyone. Um, so I've had the blessing of being able to work on each of our storytelling initiatives starting in 2020. We um, started with a microdocs. Um, initiative that was really born out of a desire to shape our narratives um, about our communities during a time when there was a lot of stereotyping and, and misinformation about Asian Americans and in the media. And so um, that one was called, um, Lily, can you um, put the slide back on the previous slide? Um, it just moved forward. <laughs> yeah. um, is there a way to go back? Yes. Yes, there. Um, so we started with Asian American stories in the time of coronavirus in 2020, um, and then in 2021 and 2022, we moved to basically each each series since then has really responded to um, each moment in time and where where our communities are at. And so um, with the next themes, we looked at the resilience of our, our communities and moved beyond purely pandemic stories. And so um, you can you can definitely take a look at our prior initiatives. We have a two minute microdoc series from 2020, three minute microdocs in 2021. And then in 2022, we had a co-production uh, with World Channel and CAM um, uh, to create a series of 10 minute short films. Um, so Lily's gonna post links in the chats, definitely check them out. Um, as far as, um, I mean, they're all really excellent, but if you check out the two microdoc series, I think they would be most informative for how to tell a, a a tight story in a in a short amount of time. Um, our last, um, the series I mentioned, the co-production with World and CAM um, was nominated for a Daytime Emmy Award. It's screened at many festivals, CAM Fest, LA Asian, among others, and has won a couple of other awards too. So we're really proud of the work that we've done with the storytelling initiatives. Um, so yeah, essentially, I'm gonna pass it to Anu to introduce um, the current initiative. Thanks, Pallavi. Hi, everyone. So our current initiative, you know, it's really focused on issues that are important to us in 2024, this being an election year. And we're, I mean, if, if we could put a few, like, thoughts out into the world today, they would really be optimism and hoping for the best. So we're going to be selecting seven filmmakers or teams uh, filmmaking teams and each will receive about three thousand will receive three thousand dollars in production funding to create these two minute videos but a huge part of what we're hoping to do with these films is also create an impact campaign leading up to the elections so there'll be an, an extra seven hundred and fifty dollars that will be a stipend for filmmakers to um, support that impact uh, work um, we do have an impact producer who will be working and guiding the filmmakers. So that'll be an extra part. And so you're not going to be doing that work on your own. It will be something that'll be part of a larger campaign, um, but you will be also receiving sort of guidance and training along 
um, along the way. Uh, you'll also receive mentorship from two veteran filmmakers during the production and post-production stages. So, you know, again, it's for us, this isn't just about the, you know, the handing of the funds. It's really a way for us to support filmmakers um, through this process. So we'll be a part of this, you know, with you and supporting you all through the way. Um, the themes that we have in mind for this particular, more, more than themes, I think that like the overarching sort of thoughts behind this entire series is to really, you know, show stories about how people and communities can break through the pull of cynicism and hopelessness around voting and really have their voices heard. So we're looking for films and, you know, st stories that focus on individual and or community action initiatives and participation on urgent issues going up to the elections. We're looking for filmmakers who can take a hyper-local um, approach and maybe even an unconventional approach um, to capture stories that can engage and revitalize voters. And, you know, and, and like all through this, what we're really trying to say is that our participation as voters really counts and disengagement for us is not an option. So what will really, um, excite people and engage people um, to vote. Um, and the mission for the series, you know, is also to increase the visibility and support for Asian Americans in the documentary field. So we're advocating for our presence um, and, you know, for equity and diversity. So I'll pass it back to Pallavi to talk a little bit more on topics of interest that we have. Right. So we have, these are some just target areas for us. And we kind of thought through some example stories and wanted to share them with you. But for hyper-local governance, we're looking at looking for proposals that focus on governing structures and processes through a local perspective um, from within our communities. And one example would be like language accessibility when it comes to voting potentially in battleground states, um, grassroots activism and participation, looking for proposals that highlight um, perhaps individuals or groups that show representations at the local level and campaigns that can um, help our communities gain representation in, in the electoral process. Um, one example we, we, we found was um, a movement to grant non-citizens the right to vote in local school board elections and have a say in their children's educations. Um, community movements is definitely important to us. We want to see films that demonstrate collective power um, through community-based initiatives um, and campaigns that are generated within and for um, the community, for the people, essentially. So um, we found some stories about community efforts to influence redistricting um, to create powerful um, Asian American or Pacific Islander majority wards. Um, we were also looking at um, stories that um, focused on groups that are combating misinformation about affirmative action. That's kind of preying on the fears of our communities. Um, creative approaches to civic engagement. I'm really open here. Um, there might be some kind of innovative way, maybe it's through art or culture or, culture or um, unique participatory projects or experiences where um, folks are engaging in public discourse or the civic process. Um, yeah, and then young emerging, young emerging voices is, is, is definitely important to us showing younger generations participation um, in the civic process. And, and so maybe it's something about first time voters, 18 year olds, um, experiences in key states or something about youth or young adult participation. So these are um, just meant to, to spark ideas and not to um, narrow down your focus. We're really open to your original and innovative ideas. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about artistic approach. Um, we, um, yeah, I mean, this is in the call for proposals, but definitely original ideas are, are very welcome. Um, solid production values, compelling visuals and approaches. If you're thinking about a unique way to, to tell your story, let us know. Um, powerful stories and in, inspiring film participants is, is, is pretty important for us. Um, uh, we also wanted to just state that we are, um, we're open to varying levels of experience from our filmmakers, um, but you do need to have 
a basic approach to filmmaking. Um, and so like some exposure to filmmaking and, and clearly articulate your artistic approach in the proposal. Um, you're also welcome to work with or collaborate with a filmmaker, filmmaker who has more experience um, in production and post-production on the proposal or, or um, even throughout your production. Um, prior work samples are strongly encouraged just so we can get a sense of who you are as filmmakers. Um, Lily, do you want to talk about timeline? Sure. Thanks, Pallavi. Um, So we're currently uh, in the open call stage and the deadline currently for proposals is January 26. Um, and we will use the entire February to review all the proposals that we receive. The review panel will be made up of the storytelling initiative team, which means the three of us and also veteran filmmakers within ADOL network and also external reviewers um, and our impact producer so that the, each proposal we receive would be evaluated through different pros, uh, perspectives. And then on March 1st, we will announce the final six, uh, seven filmmakers. Um, and from March to May, this would be the production period for the film, all seven films. Uh, during this time, filmmakers will, will receive mentorship for two different mentors, one during production and one during post-production. Um, we are aiming at a May 2024 release date for all seven films. And from there, we will start the impact campaign leading up to the 2024 election. Um, and the next step is submission requirements. Uh, as, a, as you can also see in our open call, uh, this is a very shortened version from the DocCor application. Yeah, we are requiring film title, log line, story summary, artistic approach, topic summary, connection, and community care, and obviously audience and impact. And also we want to know who you are. That's why we ask for a filmmaker bio. And we are strongly encouraged filmmakers to submit their prior work sample so that we can see where um, you were before submitting this proposal. Um, Please know that we will only consider one project per director. Uh, collabor collaboration is encouraged, but we need one person to submit the proposal to be act as, as the main applicant and also contact person with the team. Um, and if you are collaborating with other filmmakers, no more than two people can be listed as, as directors in your final credits. So if you have multiple proposal or story ideas that you're thinking through, uh, pick the strongest one to submit, um, as we can only consider one pro uh, one proposal per director. And I will pass it back to Paula Wee to talk a little more about eligibility. So first things first, um, uh, before submitting, um, you must either be an ADOC member already or join prior to um, uh, submitting your proposal. We'll, be checking and we'll only be reviewing proposals from ADOC members. Um, we, we've had a few storytelling initiatives in the past. And so um, we wanted to just share that we'll, we'll give priority, anybody can submit, but we'll give priority to filmmakers who haven't received support from ADOC storytelling initiatives in the past two years. Um, the story should be focused on Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander subjects or perspectives. Um, and um, if you know if 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 you're selected, then um, there'll be some requirements around logos in your in your in your credits. Um, you also have to. I think we also put this in the call, but you grant ADOC a non-exclusive license in perpetuity, um, so we can also pursue distribution and impact opportunities on your behalf. Um, the series right now, our intention is to release it on social media. Um, like we've done with the um, prior microdocs um, initiatives uh, with ADOC, st ADOC staff support starting in May and continuing throughout the year. Um, but also we are, um, uh, our, our impact producer will work to, to um, work with you for, um, to create like a series impact campaign and um, there might be more opportunities for, for impact throughout the year. There will be. Um, 
couple other things to note um, as you're working with the ADOC team, um, expect multiple rounds of feedback during the post-production process. We're not heavy handed with our feedback and we really wanna work with the filmmakers to achieve your vision. Um, and also just last on eligibility or required to participate in the series impact campaign, it's part of a commitment to the series and that's where the 750 stipend um, falls, falls in. Um, I think Lily, if you wanna share the open call link in the chat, just in case anyone hasn't seen that yet. So you can see a lot of this information there. Um, we'll also share the slides um, with you all and, and make that available um, on Slack and with all of you participants. Um, so I'll just, I think we can move on. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I covered the requirements. Um, on the eligibility slide. So yeah, we're moving on to, to Q&A. Um, we have received a couple of questions already, so maybe we can just cover those first, um, and then we can open it up to your questions as well. Anu, do you wanna take these? Uh, sure, give me one second. So the answer is actually right there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. So I collaborate. We love collaboration. I think for us, it's uh, we're we're just asking that we have one point person that we're in main contact with, um, so that when you're submitting the proposal, you're the person that we're reaching back out to, and um, any conversation we'll have is with that one contact person. Um, and the strict time runtime we do have, it's a two minute runtime. So. If it's a few seconds here or there, it's it's not going to be a big deal, but it's not gonna be, you know, we're not gonna make it a two and a half minute or a three minute film. It will be approximately two minutes. Um, if you're already in development or production on a project, yes, absolutely, you're you're still eligible. Um, just just know that with whatever you are submitting, if there's some, like if you're pulling out two minutes from something that you've already, got in the works, you will get feedback from us um, and we will be evaluating your funding sources and you know whatever other commitments you've made to see if they still align with you know the, the sort of guidelines that we have for this, um, looking at the future distribution for our particular series. But yeah, we're, we're happy to take any questions. I see one in the chat right now is the $750 impact related at all to the ADOC Impact Fellowship. So the Impact Fellowship is completely separate. Um, in this particular case, we actually are giving a, you know, a $750 stipend to the filmmakers to uh, do the impact work for their own films, really. Uh, we understand that it, you know, it's for any filmmaker, you're taking out time to, to do this. I mean, it's all, all impact work takes time, it takes commitment. So it's a stipend. It's um, to help you do that. We're open to other questions too. I think Lily, if we take the slides off, we can see everybody's faces now. <laughs> Thank you. And if you do have questions that you wanna ask us directly, you can raise your electronic hands, which are at the bottom in reactions, or again, feel free to add them to the chat. Um, the story is limited to current events in 2024. They don't, they don't need to be, I mean, since, you know, people might already be in production, the events don't actually have to happen in 2024, but we're not really looking for historical films. We're really focusing on films that are more contemporary. Um, so if, if there is a historical element, it still needs to relate to something that's happening right now, you know, that is, that's more current. Um, so I hope that answers that question, but feel free to add a follow-up if you need. And then proposals for film, not English language with English subtitles. I believe that should be totally fine. I, we don't, do not have an issue with that. Mia. Hi, um, thanks so much for holding this session. Um, I was wondering if there are strict deadlines throughout the process, um, because the idea I have is for an event that isn't taking place until like the latter half of April. So I suspect post-production um, will be pretty fast uh, since it's 
um, you know, a relatively short project, but just wondering if there are deadlines throughout March and April that would affect that timeline. I can take that one. I, I suspect we haven't flushed out the deadlines yet, but I suspect that that timing would be really tight um, and that ideally production would take place in March with post in April. We will have a picture lock deadline sometime in April and people should be fully delivered by the end of April so that we can launch in May. So we can, we can, you know, maybe feel free to reach out if you, you know, you want to discuss this further, but um, it all, of course, it depends on each individual situation, but I suspect that that would be hard to commit to the timelines I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to set. Um, we have a question in the chat. Are there any hot topics in policy that are top of mind for you? Um, I don't know, Anu and Pallavi, do you want to take that? Anyone you want to take that? I mean, I don't think that they're necessarily hot topics. I think ultimately it, it's, there, there are some certain issues that tend to be more in the news than other issues. That doesn't mean that they become hot topics for us. I think for us, if anything, because we're looking at hyper-local um, or we're like really interested in hyper-local stories, those might be things that may not immediately appear as hot topics, but they might ser be relevant to issue important issues. So not sure if that answers the question really well. But um, again, I think you can reach out to us with specific examples if you're like this versus this. But I would say something that's more personal or some more local to you um, would be something that would interest us a little more. Balavi, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think I think that's you said it perfectly. I mean, we can always say, oh yeah, we're interested in women's rights or environmental or gender, LGBTQ, I, there's so many things, education, like there's things that are relevant that may be hot topics that we're open to those or we're open to other things as well. So we don't want to limit it by picking those, picking those for you. And, and I received a question. These are, you know, are people without prior samples to submit completely out? If not, what would they need to provide an absence of prior work or something that would help us be considered? Um, Pallavi, do you want to take that for a second, and I'll be <laughs> Yes, I we, we're look we're looking for um, emerging filmmakers, but not beginner filmmakers. So there does need to be some prior, so, like some example of filmmaking that you can send to us, and it doesn't. Um, the deadline is January twenty sixth. So um, another another option is to work with a co director and have the other person be the applicant um, uh, with somebody that's more experienced. And I saw Devon raise her hand. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Hi, um, my question is, could you share more context about what you're looking for in an impact campaign and what that could look like for a microdoc? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to answer that, Pallavi? Sure. Um, since we're hiring an impact producer, I think this person will be kind of act as a mentor. And based on what the story you submit, the impact producer will have sort of like a workshop with everyone in the filmmaker cohort. And also um, based on what your story is, make some suggestions for you to create your impact campaign and provide some feedback. So I don't know if this is something that you will be, um, in, I, I think, I think I don't know if the, and this answers your question, but the impact producer would be the person who is kind of help guiding you to design the impact campaign. So it really depends on what kind of story that you're thinking of making and the impact campaign will be different based on your story. I'll just, I'll just add, cause one of the questions in our proposal is, you know, it's an impact. And one way that I've often like, thought about that, especially when I'm trying to figure out like how a film can make impact is, you know, who your primary audience is and how you would like to reach them. So if you're able to pinpoint a few, you know, or articulate a few ways that you can reach that audience or you're thinking about reaching that audience, that would be enough for us to get started. 
Um, we're not expecting you to be experts on impact. That is, as Lily mentioned, we, we're going to have somebody who can help guide you on that journey. But we do want to hear how you think or what you think would be the best ways to reach the audience that you really want to reach. Um, we have a question in the chat. Who do you feel the audience should be in our positioning of the GOTV initiatives? National ADOC audience or for the local audience? I mean, I'd say, you know, it can totally be a local audience. If it reaches a national audience, that's great, but it doesn't have to. Again, we always have to think of like a primary audience and then what the ancillary audience might be. But Bolivia and Lily, feel free to jump in. Um, we, the, the reason we're doing a series is that as a series, we hope that we're reaching a much wider audience, but we don't expect every film to reach like everyone or a national audience. I think I'll just add that um, we envision with the impact campaign there, that there would be sub audiences that that would be targeted. Um, and that's that is all to be determined when we you know, have an impact producer and, uh, you know, have them work, consult with the the filmmakers. It's sort of up in the air right now about what that could look like. Um, um, but I think, you know, audiences is something that we'll, we'll discuss with you and you will discuss with the impact producer as well. Um, I think there's a follow-up hyperlocal stories for national audience. I, I think I leaning towards the answers, yes. Um, there are a lot of key issues at play nationwide, but there's always a local angle. So we're expecting filmmaker to find the local angle for us. Or in general, it's how local communities are participating in election or just civic engagement in general that can encourage folks nationwide to go out to vote or to do something within those communities as well. I don't know if that answers your questions. And we have another one. Uh, Jamie is asking, can you give an example of a hyper-local story? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the stories, and this is unrelated to any of the ADOC initiatives, but for instance, I, I live in Chicago and our ward is, ward is currently um, involved in participatory budgeting which is really bringing out the community and a local filmmaker is, you know, working on that. So that would be an idea, like example of hyper local in the sense that it's, it's very specific to Chicago and it's very specific to a small ward in Chicago, but it is about how participation in elections can really energize and excite people. So I would say that's one example. Valerie, well, Lily, any other? Yeah, maybe um, 16 and 17 year old students, um, youth being, you know, petitioning for the right to vote um, in local elections. Um, some of them are even serving on school boards and, and are showing, you know, their civic engagement that way. So that's, that's happening in Oakland. So where I am. Um, so that's something hyper local, but that could be relevant to a national audience. There's another question about filmmaking approach. Should we be more character focused or topic focused? Lily, were you gonna say something? Um, No. Well, I'll say um, just because it's a two minute film that it helps to have um, a, a person that we can really sort of I, you know, watch as they go through a specific um, event or experience or, you know, see how the, their story unfolds, but it doesn't have to be. If you're able to tell a larger issue of a topic in two minutes, I think that that's, we're, we're open to either. It does not have to be character focused. Um, I, there's another question um, here, which is, do the stories have to promote electoral politics or civic engagement solely by voting? Not at all. Um, I think that voting is one aspect of the larger thing, but um, it can be, 
we are interested in the election. So we are looking at um, films that maybe promote somebody who's running for office or, or a volunteer who's, you know, participating in that sort of civic um, process, but voting by itself does not have to be part of the film so, or, you know, any part of the film. Olivia? Yeah, I would just add that it, it's more like, um, it can be, but it can also be sort of the, the end, ideal end result, which is that folks in our communities are reminded of what's at stake and they would, they might be compelled to go out and vote. Any other questions? And also, if you think of any further questions, you're welcome to email us. You can reach us at staff at adoc.org. I will send the email address in the chat as well. Cool. Um, if there's no further questions, I think I think this is the end of our info session. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, this recording will be shared uh, through the email that you registered for the info session with. And also we will be posting this on Slack as well. Yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks all.